Hi friends, welcome back. Uh, well, are you also at home and maybe a bit bored, you don't really know what to do? Well, in my case I thought let's do some quantum mechanics with everyday items you probably can find at home. Well, of course we're talking about the famous double slit experiment. I'd like to make a small setup here, really simple. You only need some aluminum foil. A laser pointer, this could be the most difficult thing to find. But maybe, you know, check some old remote controls, they could also, some of those have laser pointers inside. You need a sharp knife and like a piece of paper. That's it, basically. Um, helpful would be maybe some wood to, you know, fix stuff on top that it doesn't wiggle around all the time. Any kind of tape you can find. And the pair of scissors is also appreciated. So what's this whole double slit thing about? What am I talking about? Well, in short, um, it's about wave particle duality. In this case of light. But you could also do this with electrons and even like bigger particles. But we'll stick to light, to photons for now. It's just a bit easier. Um, the thing is, most people intuitively assume light behaves like a particle, like it goes in straight lines. If you have something that has like a slit inside, a piece of paper and a flashlight like a normal one, um, I hope you can see this back here, it casts a shadow. Uh, maybe I can zoom in the flashlight. You have a um, shadow of the paper and you have one slit where the light goes through back there on the wall. Same thing if you have two slits and a standard flashlight. You have two slits back there on the wall. So it just goes through like an arrow, like in a straight line. That's the idea. But that's not everything that's to this story. Well, let's continue this thought of this experiment for a little bit. Uh, let's assume we change the flashlight, which the problem with the flashlight is it has like a lot of colors. There's a lot of wavelengths. Well, now we already assume it's a wave. We're still actually assuming it's a particle. But yeah, the colors can be a problem because the waves are like, it, it's a mix. It's kind of a chaotic mix of different frequencies. Um, what happens if we take something like a laser that has like, it's very, almost only one frequency. It's one color, that, that's a bit the special thing about lasers. We take our big double slit and we have the laser here. We shine it through the slit. Yeah, it goes through in this just a spot. If we go through the second slit, same thing happens. Of course, this slit is much too big for the laser to pass through both slits at the same time. So what happens if we change this much too big slit to a very small one where the laser beam is actually able to pass through both slits? In theory, or in theory, in intuitively I would say most people will think, well, the same thing that happens with the flashlight. You get two slits of light on the projection screen. But nope, you get an interference pattern and what that looks like I'll show you right now. Well now we change the flashlight for the laser pointer and we change the big slit for some very tiny ones here in aluminium foil. Come on focus. And like they're really the 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 thing in the middle should be like less than a half a millimeter. They're, they have to be really, really tiny. I'll show you in a minute how to make them. Uh, yeah, we changed these two factors in our experiment. We've got a laser now and we've got some very tiny slits. Let's see what happens. Hope you can see it on the camera. I see an interference pattern. And I think we have to turn off the lights quick for this to work better. Okay, I zoomed in and dimmed the lights a little. So let's see what happens if I shoot the laser 
through these really tiny slits. I see an interference pattern. I hope this works on the camera. So let's go to the widest one, that's like one millimeter, which is too much. Yeah, not much there. If we go back to the smallest slit on the aluminium foil, here we see an interference pattern again. I hope you do too. Quick explanation here. Uh, what is interference? Um, well, wave interference is basically, you get like two types. It works with sound waves, it even works with waves in water, it works with light waves, yeah. Um, if you have a wave that's coming in this way, and if you send a second wave along this, in the same frequency, this actually like uh, makes it stronger, so you'll get higher yeah, more signal, more strong waves. But then there's also like destructive interference. So if you have a wave goes this way and you have a second wave that goes exactly opposite. What happens here is they cancel each other out. So there's nothing here basically. So this is destructive interference. This is constructive interference and in the end in the double slit you get something like this which kind of means uh, where you see the, the waves this is constructive interference in the gaps where you see nothing in between this is destructive interference uh, we can show this here on uh, two little examples so one really simple way to show you an example of um, interference is with sound, with sound waves. It's actually quite simple. If you have two smartphones around, you can try this out yourself very easily. Just download any frequency generator app and set it to the same frequency on both phones. I'll turn it on on 1000 Hertz now. First phone, second phone. So this is constructive, like both waves go up, they support each other. What happens if I change the frequency a little bit on one phone? Go to. So you hear it goes like It's only one hertz difference, this is really little. You can go three hertz difference, then it's faster. You hear the wee 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 and this is basically the same thing what happens here. You've got constructive interference and destructive interference. Well, another way you could try uh, this interference experiment is in a bathtub or any body of calm water. The water has to be very calm. So I tried this out in our bathtub here. I did a double slit in a piece of wood. I have to like get it in about halfway to the slits. And it's a little bit trickier here to see the effect, but I think I found out a trick. You need your bathtub, your double slit piece of wood and some strong light source like uh, yeah, something like this and some rocks of course to create some waves. Let's see how this here works out. Uh, my experience, it helps a lot if you have the light source exactly above. You can even see some shadows of the slits in the bathtub. And you, you will also see the waves as shadows a little bit. This helps out. I'll move the camera that it's really centered, put the light source exactly on top of the slits. Then we'll throw some rocks back on this side and we'll try to see if there is wave interference on the other side when the wave travels to both slits and creates two waves which interfere. You get what I mean. Okay, I kind of centered in the camera. I'll put the light source exactly on top. Maybe a bit sideways that you still can see the shadows of the slits. So let's see what happens if we drop a rock on one side of the slits. 
Yeah, it wasn't directly centered, but I think you can see what's going on on the other side. There's two waves coming out and they interfere with each other. That one was a bit better, I think. One more. Okay. Double slit experiment in your bathtub. So there you go. We just proved that light is a wave. And before that we proved that light is a particle. Then your brain melts. I know, but it, that's quantum physics. It's also the fascinating aspect for me. I won't say that I can explain you what's going on in detail. There's a lot of good videos for that. I'll put links in the description as always. Um, but yeah, it's a fun experiment. You can do it at home really easily. And right now I'll show you a better picture. Uh, I'll took, uh, I, I, I took this with my DSLR when the setup was more steady. So you can, yeah, the video camera is not ideal for this to show you. But yeah, here you go with the picture. And let's continue with the setup, how to make the slits and also alternative ideas that I tried out. But I must say I like the aluminium foil idea the best. So I'll try to show you, this could be a bit difficult with the camera. Basically you just need a really sharp knife. Um, these here work quite well for me. Um, but it's worth the effort of breaking off the first blade just to get the sharper one back here. If you have a scalpel or something like that, that's of course would be ideal. What works for me is just to really put very little power. Cut a little bit. Uh, it's tricky, especially with the camera beside my face. Just really try go close, make a second slit. This one turned out horrible, but I think you get the idea. Where are we here? Oh, does this thing focus? Let's just go back. Yeah, horrible. But yeah, you, you get what I mean. Um, just again to show the nice ones. These are the ones I'm working with. I'll just shine some light through that you can see the slits. But yes, they're very small. I'll just put a ruler on top of these really quickly. Okay, focusing is difficult, but I think this here kind of works. So, these over here, they're too big. This one's too big, this one kind of works, this one does, and this one is really the best. It's the smallest. It's very, very little, maybe a quarter millimeter or so. Well, yeah, that's basically how you do the double slit experiment at home with very cheap everyday materials. Um, there are alternatives to the aluminium foil slit that I prefer. I tried some out. There's a lot of videos uh, similar to this one, how you set this up at home. I watched some of them and tried out other ideas as well. Um, for example, uh, Thought Emporium, one of my favorite YouTube channels. He's really amazing. He has a really good video on the double slit experiment. But I don't like his methods of making the slits, just to show you. I tried the same. He used a piece of glass and sot just from you know a lighter uh, to darken it. And I also tried to cut some slits in. I think here you can see them a little bit. But as you see, glass and heat are not that good friends. And yeah, also the, the slits, it just didn't work for me. I couldn't really get this to work. Maybe it works for you. Um, another thing is uh, you can you see quite a lot on the internet too is you can all um, use an old CD, um, but I find CDs a bit annoying. Um, you have to like get all the sticker out. You need the transparent, uh, the transparency of the CD for this to work. So that's bullshit in my opinion. There's an alternative which kind of works. I still prefer the aluminium foil, however, but this is like the best thing that I found as an alternative. DVDs, because they have two layers and I'm sure you have some old movie you watched once and then you don't care about it anymore. Um, let's see what happens if we break one of these. Come on, come on. Tough one. Okay, so 
fun thing about DVDs, they have two layers, you can peel it off. Okay, maybe this didn't turn out that well, but you have a transparent layer here. This kind of works like a diffraction grating. We can test it out quick, just to have a look how this here uh, could work. So before we try out the DVD option, uh, just a little disclaimer here. Lasers are dangerous, even the weak red ones, you can damage your eyes. So never look directly into the beam. Be careful about reflections. This is like the only downside on the aluminium foil option in my opinion. It reflects, so you have to be careful that the beam doesn't shoot back into your eye. And of course if you use anything stronger than your standard normal red laser pointers, wear protection. Um, in my case, all the shops are closed, I can't really go buy a laser protection glass so I wear a fake one, but I'm trying to be a good example here. And also, yeah, the DVD thing didn't work with the red one for me, but I think that's just because the batteries on the red laser pointers are kind of dead. I found this thing here though, and this kind of works. Um, yeah, let's uh, try to find uh, the interference pattern with the DVD and the green laser pointer. I think before I kind of found out, you have to hold the CD in about a 45 degree angle. The DVD, I mean, of course. Let's find the interference pattern. Here you can see it. Oh yeah, it's more than 45 degree though. I hope you can see this on the camera, but you can see all the dots on the side. That's uh, the interference pattern we're looking for. Well, just before we end the video, maybe two alternatives to the aluminium foil and slit options. This here is basically just uh, electrical tape, paper and in the middle as like a middle barrier I just took some very thin copper wire from a speaker cable. This is a bit fiddly but it kinda works well. I'm not sure if you can see it well on the video because it's daylight again and yeah, you, yeah. I'll insert some pictures that I made in the evening. Yeah, this is how this would look. Then there's another option which is kind of interesting too. Just really quick. Instead of slits, you can actually try to poke holes with a thin needle, like a sewing needle, into the aluminium foil. It looks a bit different, but the principle is the same. Again, I'll insert a picture that I took with the better camera or with better light. Okay, let's take a last look at our setup here. The little red laser with almost dead batteries is shining through um, the wire thingy that we showed before. We have a diffraction pattern here. The question is, yeah, it kind of focuses, not really, uh, but it's there, it's a diffraction pattern. The green setup works easier, probably just because of more power. Actually the wavelength is smaller on the green one, so the gaps are more close besides. You can even do like really a lot of theory here with calculating wavelengths of different colors. It's, it's a very interesting topic. I'm sorry I didn't go into the theory that much. Uh, also like the video pictures don't look so good, so of course here you get some photographic ones. Uh, but in general this was really fun. I hope this was maybe a little bit of inspiration for somebody to do something like this at home. Be careful with lasers, of course. Um, thanks for watching very much. Also the bathtub idea, I really like that thing. I should have spent more time. The effect was very nice actually, even like for the optical video I think. Maybe for the next video or something. Yeah, thank you very much for watching, um, see you next time, have a good time, bye!